Let's jump on the V4R, put some more miles on this sucker. 110 plus horsepower. I'm glad I didn't get nabbed for trespassing. factory. So this is the Chagrin Falls. Good morning everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eve here and we have a rare, pretty decent day here in filthy Cleveland. So I'm about to jump on one of my motorcycles and go for a cruise. Don't know exactly where I'm going to go right now, but uh, it's too nice to stay cooped up in the house. But how do I decide which one of my motorcycles I'm gonna ride on any given day? Well, I don't know. Today I decided to ride the Ducati V4R because I've gotta put more break-in miles on this beast. I have to get it to over 600 miles so that I can get my first service. And we can throw this motorcycle back on the dyno at Ducati Detroit and see just how much horsepower it's gonna make north of 201 on their dyno. I'm convinced this motorcycle will produce 210 plus horsepower on the Ducati Detroit dyno after we get the 600 miles and after we change the oil and put the Motul awesome 300V full synthetic oil into this machine. So stay tuned for that. I'm not gonna ride the Zuma today uh, because it's not fast enough. So you know, this is a very fun motorcycle to ride actually but I'm not gonna ride it today. Of course, I'm not gonna ride my son's PW50. Um, I was gonna ride the HP4, because uh, I love this machine. As you saw in my last video, it thoroughly impressed me when it compared up against my V4R, and I love the cool gadgets on this motorcycle, such as this illuminated BMW Rondell. Looks great, auto blippers, awesome, beautiful machine. After I get my 600 miles, on the V4R, I will be on this motorcycle a lot. Uh, um, probably a lot up until I get my 2020 S1000 RRM Sport and then I'm gonna be riding that like crazy. The H2 is gonna sit there. This is an R1M track bike. I'm gonna ride at the track next weekend. This extremely comfortable MT10 motorcycle, I thoroughly enjoy riding that too. Uh, but uh, just didn't make the cut for today. Let's jump on the V4R, put some more miles on this sucker so we can show you the power this machine's gonna make. Here's a cold start for your listening pleasures. Pardon the wind noise. always wear my protective gear even when it's nice and warm 80 degrees like it is today protective gear is still a must so now we're in this lovely town called Chagrin Falls it's a very nice area on the east side of Cleveland it's sort of a mix of an old-school town and they've got some new construction and new developments coming up here as well so you get that nice small town feeling with just a sprinkle of modern stuff. Chagrin Falls. Wow. Pretty cool looking. Nice restaurants over there. I was once an extra in a movie that was filmed at that restaurant. I think the movie was called Check Please. That was a pretty interesting event. A lot of fun. Got some folks checking out the bikes.
So I went from the Chagrin Falls to a great body of water here, Lake Erie, near downtown Cleveland. I'm going to try to put the drone up so we can get some amazing footage. Oh, look at that. Look at that skyline over there. timeless they're not exactly supercars well most of them I mean the 918 spider is definitely a supercar it's just the GT3 RS uh, I would say that's a supercar but most people when you see it coming down the road would not consider that a supercar I think it is and it's definitely on my list of supercars to obtain uh, news about that if you're still tuning into this video congratulations but I've got some news about my supercar pursuits. Earlier today, I stopped at Marshall Golden, talked to my good buddy Arthur, and we saw the beautiful Ferrari F12 that my good buddy Autovlog is taking delivery of. He'll have that vehicle by the time you see this video. Congratulations to Autovlog for doing that. That's an amazing car. Uh, naturally aspirated, front engine, V12 automobile. It's gonna be great for his channel. And I'm, you know, the good thing about the F12 that he's purchasing is that it's also a great track car. I'm not sure if he intends to track it, but I would if I owned it. And that's the criteria that I'm looking for for one of, for my supercar. It has to be a car that could be easily tracked, road racing track I'm speaking of, and even the drag racing track, but mainly the road racing track. And uh, a car that won't break down on the road racing track. Uh, you know, it won't have crazy issues like overheating or it, it'll be, it, it's not too big or it won't be nimble enough to, to corner and do the things that I wanted to do on the track. I want to take a sports car or supercar on a road racing track to have the exhilarating experience that I have on these awesome motorcycles. To me, that's the best way to get your money out of a supercar and out of a super bike is to take it to the road racing track. It's also fun to take it to the drag racing track too. So, the Lamborghini Aventador that I've been lusting over all winter, that I love so much, is out of the question for me for a supercar because it's not really friendly for the track. It can, it can handle the road racing track, but you're more likely to get crazy issues out of it if you take it to the track. Secondly, I can barely fit in the Aventador Roadster without a helmet on. And I definitely cannot fit in it wearing a helmet. And you have to wear a helmet at most road racing tracks. So that's the reason why the Lamborghini Aventador Roadster has been wiped off my list. My fuel light's on. But there is an amazing vehicle that I consider a supercar that 9 out of 10 people would also consider to be a supercar that fits my criteria. Um, you can take it to a road racing track. It does very well on the road racing track. Um, the convertible or the roadster that I'm looking at with the top down or the top up, let's just say. With the top up, I can fit in the vehicle while wearing a helmet. So that's great for me. I'm not going to tell you what this vehicle is. You're going to have to either guess or figure it out but uh, the vehicle is currently not in, not in production it goes in production in September and it'll be available for sale in November which is fine for me it's perfect timing because I'm gonna spend the entire summer on all of these motorcycles that I'm uh, acquiring <laughs> so I'll be producing videos on motorcycles and so in the fall It'll be just in time for a supercar. So we got to see Chagrin Falls. We went downtown for a second. Couldn't fly the drone because uh, there was an airport nearby. And now we're headed towards home. But I got to stop and take a look at what used to be 
a Veterans Administration hospital. And now it's been demolished. It's basically rubble and they're going to turn it into, I believe, a strip mall or something. Yeah. But it's pretty cool to see what they've done. I wonder if I can get back there. to see how the demolition back there is going and thanks to my trusty drone <laughs> we got to see that today i think it's coming along pretty good uh they're going to make use of this space because this empty former va building sat here unused and uninhabited for over five years that's a long time but uh i'm glad they're finally going to do something with it and also glad i didn't get nabbed for trespassing All the things we go through to put brake-in miles on your brand new bike. That's what this is all about today. Just cruising, trying to go places to put the 621 required brake-in miles onto this motorcycle so that I can get the first service and the, hi, the oil light that's going to come on at 621 miles can be removed by Ducati Detroit using one of their crazy tools that they hook up to the motorcycle. So we'll continue our journey. We'll get about 550 miles or so on the bike today and put the remaining miles on the bike tomorrow. Get that first service done in that crazy dyno. After we get the first service and oil change, we're gonna see how much power this bike makes. I think everyone's going to be pleased with it. And by then, we might have, or we should have, in our possession, our 2019 Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory. And we'll put that on the dyno to give it a stock comparison. We're going to do the same things we did with this bike and the rest of our bikes for the new Aprilia that we're collecting soon and the BMW S1000 RRM that's due to arrive the first week of June. All of the bikes will get an initial dyno pool with very little miles on them, about 10, about 10 heat cycles, and we'll throw them on the dyno. And then they'll get another dyno, uh, you know, after about 150 miles or so, and then another dyno after their first service. So we can track the horsepower gains. Oh, let's stop here at State 8 and check out my soon-to-be Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory. So there are a bunch of Aprilia RSV4s in the house. We got the RSV4 RF with an amazing price. 17 grand pretty much. This was a $23,000. Oh, it's already sold. So don't worry about that one. Uh, we have another one, an RSV4 RR. It's 13 grand. Uh, it's sold as well. So you can't get your hands on these two little girls, but this is my 1100 factory that I will be picking up here in just a little bit. And it's looking great, but we're gonna do a lot to this bike. Me and my good buddy Manny from Old Million at the hands of our good buddy Zach. We're gonna do a lot to this motorcycle to bring it to 650E spec. But it looks nice just sitting here. Don't get too comfortable with these stock wheels because they're going to be removed and replaced by Rotobox Boost Satin Carbon Fiber Wheels, which I think is going to look amazing along with the matte carbon fiber that adorns this motorcycle. And right next to it is an RS V4 LE, colorful motorcycle, looks brilliant. 
stock exhaust. You can see the difference between the huge stock exhaust canister that is on the LE versus the Akrapovich exhaust that's on the 1100 factory. All right, so stay tuned for the unboxing video, first ride video, dyno video, all those videos of this amazing Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory. I love those winglets. Carbon fiber, in fact. Well, this is gonna be an epic bike indeed. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, tap that bell so you can be notified when new content is uploaded. You're not gonna to wanna to miss any of these upcoming videos because they're all gonna be very special, unique, and definitely entertaining. These bikes this year are really, really, really great bikes. What a fantastic year for the motorcycle industry. Exactly what it needed to get people back involved and interested in riding motorcycles. Thanks so much for viewing this video. We'll catch you next time. And by then, I should have my break-in miles on my Ducati V4R.